Coming up on TechZilla, Pre versus iPhone versus Android. PC Maddox Sasha Sagan's got the word. 12 gigabytes of RAM should be enough for Vista. And well, a little bit better audio for your netbooks and your notebooks. Mix up that brownie batter, stuff them in the oven, and don't burn your fingers, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of Techzilla is made possible by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Go to Eddie.com and Squarespace. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to Techzilla, hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you already own. Yes, whether you're a beginner or the IT guy for your friends and family, if you've got a question about photo editing, building websites, the best Blu-ray player, digital cameras, or who the tamale lady of the mission is, we've got an answer for you. <laughs> and if we don't, we'll just walk up and down Mission Street until we find her. Actually, she's She's at, all over the place. It's weird. It's like quantum tamale lady. Yeah, she's at, uh, she's, she's in the mission, she's in the hate. I've she's seen her in, in some pretty random places. Oh. Oh my goodness. But the tamales are always tasty They're delicious. And delicious. Yes. Hey, did you know that Texilla has a Facebook page? I am, in fact, a moderator of the Texilla Facebook page. You control the flow of language on our yes. Facebook page? Yes. Well, not that really. Explains a few I don't things. really do much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's got cool, lots though. of Facebooky goodness. Yeah, we, we publish some episodes up there. We've got links and discussions going on. It's at facebook.com slash Texilla. We got the vanity URL. Speaking of we're vanity, fancy like that. Are, are you going to be wearing the uh, the cat suit? Any pictures of that going up there? What cat suit? The cat suit. I don't know what you're talking about. The one you're about. wearing before? Okay, so we were having a little discussion on BuzzFeed a while back about uh, this new documentary coming out called um, Cat Lady, I believe. And Texilla viewer Dave F. Uh, out there in Boston decided it would be really funny to Photoshop a picture of me wearing this outfit that he found online. Is he from Boston or Boston? Boston. Got and uh, so we were talking about it and laughing at the photo. And then I don't know who got the bread idea for him to actually send it to me. You seem to be holding some kind of a feline headband. Well, this is the headband. The cat band. Oh no. Um, so he sent it to me. I don't usually encourage people to send me gifts at Revision 3, but. Especially um, gifts with tails. This is something else. All right. <laughs> don't want to ruin my hair. So but here's wait. the headband. It doesn't stop yet. Oh no. <laughs> this is but a taste of what's to come. So All right. While you're addressing that, I understand you're very excited about the new mini USB ruling in Europe? Yeah, I think it's great. I think standardization of cell phone chargers is the way to go. I hope that the U.S. follows in Europe's footsteps. And I really can't take myself seriously having this, this discussion in this outfit right now. It has tails as a belt. <laughs> so like this is like 100% polyester. It's super uncomfortable. I don't see how anyone could wear this for extended periods. What's the Because they're crazy. Woo! I love cats. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you see seven, it? Seven counting the head Can you down. see the full Eight. glory? That is the. I like the one random tail over the shoulder. Oh, yeah, look at that. I wonder what it can. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just tack a tail on there. Why not, right? So, what was the point so of the thanks, European... Dave. <laughs> you like it? Yeah? Oh, it's like a bad, bad cat strip show. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just imagining. I'm derailed. I'm derailed. Let's keep going. Let's go. All right, so the EU ruling, that's awesome. I'm going to no, leave no, the headband no, on for the rest of the segment. No, no, you got me back to the late segment. night cat strip show thing. Any, you were saying about that before. You just said it. Mouse it, it totally was a joke. I didn't that know out. that actually existed. But whatever you do in your spare time is totally within your rights. Although, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. So the EU real, ruling, um, you don't think this is a good idea? I don't know. It's, I mean, it, on, on one hand, like having, a, having gone through like 15 different types of chargers, and one of the reasons I used to love Nokia for a while is because it kept using the same charger and the same battery across yeah, all these different phone models. Okay, that's great for that. But phone. now you're basically forcing all of these companies to use the same adapter. And so? So your iPhone, you're going to have a little mini USB power adapter right next to the freaking jack. Is that going to make you happy? Yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is actually. Oh. It is actually, Patrick. It will make me very happy. I think, call me communist, whatever. Actually, fascist I think was more the word I was going fascist. for. Fascist. Call me a communist fascist. <laughs> that doesn't work. But anyway, I think it is They're an excellent usually idea. Loggerheads. Why carry around tons of extra chargers? I mean, sure, not everyone has multiple phones like we mate. <laughs> we might, but we mate. <laughs> what do you mean we? We mate. <laughs> 
I carry around a couple different phones from time to time, but you know, to be able to charge all my devices on a mini USB would be fabulous. I mean, actually, on one hand, as I was sitting there at the sort of iGo rack at the Radio Shack this weekend going, okay, there's my phone, and there's another one for the iPod, and there's one for the yada yada. It's stupid, it's stupid. So all devices should all run off the same amount of power. That's part of the problem, though. It's like some devices If they can do it more. in the EU, they can do it here. Mm. Right? Come on, step it up. Corporate yeah. America blanches in fear at the day Veronica was elected into power as supreme ruler of power oh. cords. Anyway, Speaking we of which, probably move on to our first question. Brett! Our first question today comes from Brett, and he says, For her birthday, my wife got an MSI Wind U100-451. She has everything she wants, but it's not making her music sound great. Ruh -ruh. We need help to decide whether to buy or make a headphone amplifier or get an external USB sound card. Some dongle-sized sound cards look good, but it seems weird that something so small and inexpensive could work well. Should we think about trying a DAC in addition to either of those other things? We really appreciate some education about amps, DACs, and little USB sound cards. Also, we ain't wealthy. Little USB sound cards are DACs. DACs are digital to analog converters, and they take the zeros and ones that your computer speaks in and converts them into the analog waves that your ears process and turn into music inside of your skull. This is a good thing. Um, what's shocking is yesterday's $50 you know, external USB audio device mm -hmm. is today's $15. There's like 327 or 32 of them or something like that on Newegg for, for USB audio. 327 or, or 332? Yeah, something like oh, okay, that. Okay. No, 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 or, or 32. It's, you know, what? it's oh. an order of magnitude. It's okay. close. It's, it's um, and I, I bet three quarters of them have the exact same chipset inside of them because mm -hmm. that's just yeah. kind of the way these things are. Um, yeah, you'd be shocked actually what a little $20 outboard USB uh, audio thing would do. If somebody was like freaking out, they're listening to my headphones, like, this sounds amazing. What are, is this one of your headroom amps? And I'm like, no, it's the little thing Plantronix shoves in the box so my headset will work with a Mac because Mac can't understand microphones. Not that I'm bitter about that, but um, it's actually, the $20 device can actually sound really good. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, you know, headphones that, sound great on everything else but your notebook. Uh, I'd build a Chumoy amp first, like $15, $20 in parts. It's a little tiny headphone amp fits inside of an Altoids tin. Um, yeah, I've seen that on tons know. of blogs and websites all over the place. They're shocking. They're, it's, it's easy. It's fast. You can pick up all the parts for next to nothing. It's a nice little introduction to soldering project, and it's yeah. a nice introduction to audio tweaking, because you, first you start with a little Chumoy amp, then you start putting some higher grade capacitors on there, and some and, and suddenly you have a completely out of control hobby, but um, <laughs> <laughs> not, not that we're trying to get you addicted to it or anything. But I would start like you know you know if your if your if your headphones sound good on a lot of other devices, the, you know twenty dollar DACs are good. A Chimoy headphone amp can be amazing. If you have a little bit more money, uh, M Audio's Transport, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Art Pro talked Audio about that before. Yeah. has a good outboard uh, DAC and oh headroom. They're probably a little more than you want to spend, but by $150, $160, get an entry-level headroom amp, which also has the really nice um, crossfeed, which if you hit the crossfeed switch, well, basically it's, it's, uh, it basically does a delay equivalent to roughly the size of your head. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, so that it simulates, when you're listening to stereo music or listening to real music, um, you don't just hear left in here and right in here, you hear right with some left and left with some right, which is your way, not my way, because apparently I can't do starboard and port today. But um, the idea, though, is that uh, it bleeds a little bit of the audio through, and it's much less fatiguing over time. Because it's natural. It's yeah. Kinda like the way your brain perceives sound it's naturally. It's really funny. And I hate audio processing, but you know, it took me about a year to finally like dip my toe in it, and I actually really liked it. Very cool. Well, that so, sounds like a nice little weekend project that they could do together. The Chimoy is really fun. See, it's all like romantic and geeky at the same time. Isn't We're that home cute? soldering. It was so hot. <laughs> so we come. Cell phones. PC Mag's cell phone expert, Sasha Segan, which is no less hot than soldering in the breakfast nook after breakfast on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Let's change the subject. <laughs> yes. Let's take time now to thank one of our sponsors, Chorus Light. How do you get your beer cold certified? Check out the Project Cold experiments at CoorsLight.com slash Project Cold. There's an experiment section where guys have created new ways to chill a beer quickly. You can vote on whether their methods are cold certified and share them on Facebook. They also have Know Your Cold animations which give you tips on how to get and keep your beer cold. They've got tips on packing for a tailgate or a fridge and freezer fundamentals or creating an ice bath with your washing machine just in time for your summer house party. 
At Coors Light, they've made cold beer their policy. All Coors Light cans are now cold activated. So when the mountains turn from white to blue, you know your beer is as cold as the Rockies. So check out CoorsLight.com slash Project Cold and support us by supporting our sponsors. Welcome to this week's freebie download pick, a free program that we find useful, fun, or incredibly interesting. This week, KeyPass. It seems like you need a password for everything. Shopping, banking, email, Twitter. I bet you're probably trying to juggle 10 or 15 passwords in your head right now. How are you supposed to remember all those alphanumeric codes? Well, you should try KeyPass. This open source password manager includes a comprehensive set of tools, including a password generator, multi-user keys, and plug-in support. So all you need to remember is one master password to unlock the AES and two-fish encrypted database, and you will have all of your passwords ready and at hand. Plus, KeePass comes in a portable version, so you can keep it on a flash drive and take it with you wherever you go. If you want the ultimate in password management with an exhaustive set of tools and portability and have it for free, you need to check out KeePass. Smartphone fight. There's some serious love for smartphones here at Techzilla, and with the recent release of the iPhone 3GS in the Palm Pre, we figured it was time, the perfect time, to hit up PCMag.com's lead analyst for mobile phones, Sasha Sagan, for an expert's view on what's happening in the world of cell phones, or at least for the next couple months till something else new and amazing comes out. Sasha, welcome back to the show. Hi, Pat. Glad to be here. So the Pre's here, the 3 gs is here, you've had your hands on some of the quasi-released Android-based phones. A zillion people still use Blackberries. Is there a best smartphone? Do you see a best smartphone at this point? Is it, it, should we start with the Pre or the 3GS? or what, what, What's really grabbing your attention right now? We can start with the 3GS, which I love so much, I've actually had one surgically attached to my hand. <laughs> Uh, no, not really, but I really do love the 3GS. It's a great device. Uh, it's definitely, uh, I think it's the leader right now in terms of the pack. In terms of uh, just its sheer possibility, uh, the new processor, the new graphics core really lift apps to a new level. Uh, there's a lot of handheld computing power going on there. Any thoughts about, you know, obviously they're still tied to AT&T. I was, I was having moments of of quiet profanity since my son was in the backseat of the truck is I went through several hundred miles of I-5 with no uh, AT&T coverage whatsoever, or at least none that the iPhone could pick up. Is the 3GS doing a better job as an actual cell phone than the 3G in the original iPhone? No, the 3GS is still not a particularly good cell phone. It, uh, when I tested it against a 3G in the same locations, it dropped calls in the same places, it dropped signal in the same places. That's the thing. As long as the iPhone is tied to AT&T, I'm not going to tell anybody to switch over to AT&T for the iPhone. If you prefer a different carrier, you're going to have to come up with a different idea. Okay. Speaking of different ideas, how about the Pre? Palm. Is, is Palm saved? Is this, is this a device that's going to bring them back from the precipice, the edge? Yeah, I, I think Palm is going to survive for a while on the back of the Pre. There was a report that came out today that said they'd sold 300,000 of them in June. Uh, that's a good number for a company as tiny and previously dying as Palm. That's a great number. Uh, and you have to understand that's with only 30 apps out there and no public SDK. They really have to get that SDK out there because that's the one area where the Pre, which is a terrific device, is lacking right now. They've got to get those apps. What's delaying the release of the SDK? I mean, it's a software. You would think they would launch with the software development kit ready to go so that they would build up a larger core of applications. I totally agree, but they said it's just not ready for some reason. And uh, you know, I've dealt with I've dealt with smaller companies, and uh, sometimes it's just a case of they can only do what they can do. They can only do so many things at a time, and they needed to get the product out so they could have some revenue coming in to keep their company going. And now they can do the SDK. That makes sense. So. Check it out. If, if you don't like the applications in the store for the pre, maybe wait until they have more applications. Yeah, I mean, I would think in about three to six months, there's going to be a lot more pre apps. When I've talked to developers, they've said the pre is really easy to program, relatively simple, fun apps for. Not high end stuff. You're not going to get a lot of good games. That's a little bit of a tragedy. But a lot of novelty apps, information apps, internet apps, it's apparently effortless to program those. And so it's going to be kind of like having little desktop widgets on a cell phone. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Oh my goodness. Okay, Android. Plans for the open source ORS are looking, quote, vague and desperate, I believe was your phrase in a recent article about Android. You're a little frustrated with Android. 
Yeah, I feel that Android got off to a really slow start, okay? You have to understand what Android is really about, okay? And Android is really about uh, the open sourceness of it being able to create dozens of different kinds of handsets from dozens of different kinds of manufacturers and opening up this sort of broad world. And that hasn't happened. I mean, we've seen... Uh, two phones, now three from HTC, one from Samsung, a lot of promises. Now, the HTC Hero looks great, okay? I played with it, and it's the first Android phone that doesn't kind of feel like a stupid geek toy. Mm -hmm. uh, that, like, the Hero feels like a real thing. But I don't think Android is really going to survive unless they can get that big ecosystem that they promised. Well, in terms of that, is anybody, is Samsung, does HTC ever release date from the Hero? Is Samsung ever going to release that phone? And is anybody, I mean, there's been a lot of, of promises, vague promises. Is anybody have a hard release date for another Android phone? I haven't heard hard release dates, but you know, the the h release dates in the wireless industry shift very frequently. That's mm -hmm. why you rarely hear hard release dates and you hear a lot of rumors. I've had, uh, in, in my world, I've had ship dates change literally 48 hours before they were scheduled to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. um, in it's it's pretty amazing how flexible these dates are. That said, I've been hearing from a bunch of different carriers that uh, maybe around uh, around October, maybe pushing uh, Black Friday, we're going to hear a lot more about Android phones this fall. Okay, how about BlackBerry? And nobody's everybody talks about iPhone. Everybody uses an iPhone, but BlackBerry. There's probably two or three times as many users out there. Albeit a lot of them are corporate and not using a lot of applications. But what's coming up with the BlackBerry? Anything new? Well, that's the thing. I mean, BlackBerry is dominates the North American market uh, because they a just work. Like there's there's really not much that people can complain about the BlackBerry OS. It's it's proven. It just works. And also, they're everywhere. They're on every carrier. They're in all different price points, all different form factors. It's not like oh, we've only got one model on one carrier. You know, everybody has access potentially to a BlackBerry. And they seem to just be evolving this year. BlackBerry has some big steps every year or two. And this year, like if you look at the tour that's coming out in July, it's going to be huge on Verizon. But it's really a remix of some of the other models we've seen so far. And the Storm 2, maybe that'll advance but fix the Storm. This isn't going to be a revolutionary year for BlackBerry, but they'll stay strong. So uh, we mentioned earlier HTC has been producing uh, Android phones. HTC, I thought, always produced the best Windows mobile phones. Is anybody still producing Windows mobile phones? Has everybody forgotten about Microsoft's mobile operating system? Oh, Windows Mobile. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, there was a big buzz around Windows Mobile back in February mm -hmm. when Microsoft announced Windows Mobile 6.5 and LG made a commitment to produce 50 different Windows Mobile phones over the next four years. And Acer, they said they were doing Windows Mobile phones and you know Samsung came out with some new Windows Mobile phones. And then it was like Windows Mobile went underground for a while. <laughs> Okay, and we, we have a couple little things popping up, like the HTC Snap and Ozone have just come out, but uh, Microsoft really needs to get in gear. Uh, I think, I, I don't see any big action going on there until Christmas, and if that's true, then Microsoft's going to be way behind the other platforms. Speaking of behind the other platforms, Verizon, the Yeoman, it's, it's a great phone company, no real smartphone. What, and then, you know, multiple releases in different places. You pointed out Verizon's got some sort of wonder phone in the works. They're going to they're gonna blow everybody out of the water. Is this complete puffery, or do they actually have something on tap? Well, the thing is, Verizon has smartphones. They just don't have any leading or first smartphone. Like, they always get smartphones, but they get them maybe a little after everyone else, or maybe the second tier ones, or, like, they're getting the BlackBerry Tour on July 12th, and the Tour is awesome. Uh, the Tour looks like it's going to be really good, but it's not revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're getting this HTC Ozone, uh, which is a nice little Windows mobile piece of kit, but it's not revolutionary. Mm -hmm. They don't get the revolutionary smartphones, because I think they're basically a conservative company that way. Probably a smart thing. Hey, while we're picking your brains, last, or I should say late last year, Sprint broke down and added the same five gigabyte a month cap for EVDO modems that AT&T and Verizon and pretty much everybody else has, which I think took away Sprint's biggest advantage, which was 
catering to heavy internet users who didn't want to deal with a five gigabyte cap. Three movies, the five gigabyte cap shot. Who's got the fastest EVDO service these days, and who do you think has the best coverage on their fastest EVDO service? Sprint is probably the fastest of the bunch at the moment. Verizon has the best coverage. What's funny is that AT&T has the best technology, mm -hmm. but their build-out is such a mess that they can't realize the potential of their technology. Mm -hmm. Like, if Verizon was building using AT&T's technology, it would be super awesome. But as it is, you know, definitely if you want coverage, go with Verizon. And for now, Sprint seems to have the speed over Verizon. Is it a huge difference in speed or, or something more modest? It's not a huge difference, and in my experience, it seems to have to do with saturation as much as the technology involved. Uh, because Sprint's network is a little more lightly used and there are uh, possibly fewer people on a sector, you get a little bit more of the cell to yourself, and so it feels faster. Okay, speaking of, of saturation, AT&T is ridiculously saturated for, their, for the iPhone, certainly, and, and pretty much anything else using their 3GS service um, in New York, San Francisco, pretty much any urban area. They're promising service upgrades, and they're a little more extensive than what we've seen in the past. Is AT&T going to get it together, at least in the, in the more urban areas? What's going on oh. this fall? I hope so. Okay, for years now, AT&T has had, okay, the way you have to think about it is that Spectrum is the real estate of wireless. Okay, Spectrum is the lifeblood of wireless. And for years now, in places like New York and San Francisco, they've been cramming users into this little teeny slice of Spectrum, and now it's full because the iPhone 3GS rules the universe. <laughs> so, but it turns out they have this gigantic block of spectrum in these cities that they're barely using because it was devoted to this old technology called TDMA that <laughs> was from like 1995. And their big task is to take this huge block of spectrum, which is as big as the spectrum Verizon has in some cities, really? and convert that to 3G. And when that happens, and that's called 3G on 850, when that happens, in theory, you know, it'll be a breath of fresh air. Everybody will be able to walk around and feel free and have lots of connectivity and not drop calls. At least that's what is supposed to happen. Will the current 3G hardware work with the 850 megahertz spectrum? Oh yeah, it's all got, it's, yeah, all the okay. phones have 850 in them already. Just checking. <laughs> So do they have any hard timeline for that, or should we just be quietly waiting this fall to see what happens? Yeah, I mean, they've been saying end of the year sort of vaguely. Mm -hmm. I get the feeling that, you know, they want to soft launch it, and they want to make sure it works. And if I was at and I'd be a little touchy about my network quality right now. I wouldn't <laughs> be making big promises. But they're everywhere. They have the most coverage of any network. <sighs> If Can you believe those wireless <laughs> company advertisements? Okay, what are those advertisements based on? No comments. Sasha, as always, you've been incredibly formative and incredibly fun. Thank you so much for being on the show. If you want to catch more of Sasha's work, and he reviews everything in the world of cell phones and mobile, you should go right now over to PC. Well, actually, finish watching Techzilla first, then go over to PCMag.com, or open that up in another you know, window on your desktop. Hey, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Squarespace. Hi Techzilla viewers, I'm Annie Gauss and I'm here to talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is so easy to use that even someone like me, with no web design experience whatsoever, can build a beautiful, professional looking website literally in just minutes. But it's also versatile. Its intuitive format and features let you be as simple or as sophisticated as you want in the way you organize your content, no matter what it is that your website calls for. Either way, you'll end up with a site that looks like you paid someone thousands of dollars to do it for you. So what are you waiting for? A deal? Okay then, just check out using the code TEKZ, that's T-E-K-Z, that gives you 10% off the entire lifetime of your order. 10%, you cannot beat that. So take it from me, Annie, if you want to put up a professional webpage without the hassles, check out squarespace.com. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, Closer It. There are already tons of photo sharing sites out there, but showing off images on a website has some limitations. Sure, you can download it to see the full high-res photo, or open it up in a browser, but even then, you might not be able to see all the beautiful details. Closer It takes a unique approach to sharing your photos on a website, and here's how it works. First, upload an image that you'd like to display. 
Once it's good to go, you can edit the image information, like name and tags. Then you're brought to your widgets management area, where you can view and select which images you'd like to display on your site. Once you've selected, simply embed the widget on your website. Your readers will be able to pan and zoom within the widget, showing them the full detail of your photos without needing to download them. So to show off your images in all their high-res glory, take a closer look at Closer It today. As you know, GoToAssist Express offered viewers who signed up for a free trial of GoToAssist the chance to win six months of GoToAssist Express free. Plus, the randomly selected winner would also have their machine poked around with right here on Techzilla. If you want to do us a favor here at Techzilla, you should go and check that out and score yourself a free trial at GoToSystexpress.com slash Techzilla. Use it to tweak around your grandmother's or your mom's or your dad's or your cousin Nestor's computer. This week, John in Portland, Oregon is suffering the wrath of our GoToAssist Express invasion. I, I tease. It's not really an invasion. It's more of a gentle maneuvering around. So, John... We're on your Dell Mini 9 running OS 10 right now? That is correct. So you are a confident violator of the OS 10 EULA by running it on non-Apple you know, hardware. I went out and, and spent the money, got a retail copy, and then I violated the, uh, the EULA right after that. I was actually surprised. It's, it's like it's running, even, uh, even over Go to Assist Express, it's actually running pretty clean and pretty fast on OS 10. Uh, you're new to OS 10, aren't you? That's correct. Yeah, I, I just uh, installed this Hackintosh version, and you know I'm a I'm a Windows guy, so I have very limited experience with. So there's uh, not a. I, I notice here as I'm poking around here, there's not a lot of applications. You notice I automatically immediately first pulled up Force Quit applications just as a as a force of habit there. Um, but yeah, you're pretty much. You've only installed one or two things in here. Okay, we got VLC on here, that's a classic. Um, have you actually ever played around with Handbrake? Handbrake, uh, no, no, I, I have heard about it, but uh, I've never uh, never used it. Oh my goodness, you don't have Firefox on here yet. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I got, got all these promises about this new version of Safari, so I thought I'd try it out. Handbrake is actually pretty cool. It's a uh, video transcoding tool. And obviously this is not the ideal platform to be running uh, video transcoding tools. Basically it allows you to grab your, pretty, pretty much move any video format to any video format. But the nice thing about it is it's great if you have uh, DVDs, not copy protected DVDs, but the VOB files. You can actually uh, set this up and use it to change things basically to to archive your dvds or to move video video around in different formats um okay. growl actually might be something a little more useful for you it's growl actually i'm just going to keep opening tabs here um people either love growl or they hate growl um what it does is allow uh, applications that aren't in the foreground of your computer to basically pop up little notifications so it can be really maddening if you're running something like uh uh, if you're running something like TweetDeck or Adium, you probably aren't familiar with Adium. That is a... You know, I'm, I'm running TweetDeck on my iPhone, but I don't know that that would be the same. <laughs> it's pretty much, I find it's TweetDeck uh, is a little more stable <laughs> uh -huh. running on the desktops. But uh, Adium, if you are into uh, instant messaging, Adium is like the classic instant messaging client for OS X. Um, what okay. about, I'm trying to think... Uh, this is a paid application, but uh, it's really nice if you want to make sure you can return your system to its original state, because you're going to be experimenting with a lot of applications. And uh, okay. I'm going to try hitting the uh, Windows key instead of the Alt key on my remote computer here to open up a new tab. Um, check out App Zapper. People love this. And basically, um, if you're in your Applications folder to uninstall, you basically just drag the icon out. And uh, mm -hmm. it's a nice theory. <laughs> So I'm not going to start you know, ripping stuff off your computer to, to uninstall it. AppSapper actually uh, does a really good job of permanently uninstalling applications and making sure everything gets uninstalled. It's really, really nice uh, if you start experimenting around with a lot of applications. Um, okay. And it's only, looks like $13. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah, it's not going to break the thing. That, that sounds great. Um, I assume you like to uh, play around with Wi-Fi? You work in uh, the yeah. uh, IT side of things, memory serves. That's true. That's true. Uh, iStumbler, especially if you want to go really crazy, install Growl, then install iStumbler. Uh, iStumbler uh -huh. is a basically it's a Wi-Fi discovery tool, um, and if uh, you run it on a machine, 
that is uh, running Growl, basically when you launch, if you launch in a target rich environment for Wi-Fi, it also works with Bluetooth, um, it'll basically launch initially like 50 different Growl notifications as all of the different uh, networks that are around and available start popping up and being uh, registered on the machine. But iStumbler is really nice. Um, another really good one uh, for image editing is Sumo, which is a free image editor. And I apologize, I'm, I'm pretty heavy on the free stuff because I just use a lot of free applications. <laughs> oh yeah, I do too, and that's, that's what I recommend to people like my grandmother who, you know, as you said uh, in the intro, uh, that, that was my motivation for, for actually getting a, a trial so that my grandmother, so I wouldn't have to travel, you know, to Corvallis, I live in Portland, and it's about a 75 mile difference between the two cities. So. Have you thought um, about setting yeah. up a GoTo Express connection with your grandmother's computer? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm going to be doing, actually. That's what I'm going to be using it for. I like that thought. So uh, Sumo Paint's a really nice uh, free image editor. It's available for the Mac. And uh, oh. do you uh, enjoy the peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent? Because I, I saw a BitTorrent client in your machine. <laughs> yes, I, I do use BitTorrent, but only for downloading Revision 3 episodes, I swear. In which case, you should definitely check out Transmission. Um, it's a okay. basically it's a free BitTorrent client, and you might actually really like that one. That's one of uh, uh, one of my personal favorites on there. I spent a lot of time in Views, formerly known as Adium, uh, but on OS X, I pretty much always use Transmission these days. Um, any kind of applications you normally run on Windows that we haven't uh, that we haven't talked about? Running on Windows, you know, I, I do use um, the Google Apps quite a bit. I don't know if there is the equivalent for well, OS X yet. Google Apps are, are just going to run over the browser, so they're accessible to any browser. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, or okay, when you say so, Google Apps, so, you mean the, the, when you're the, the Google Documents? Yeah, or? like Google Documents straight from the application that's created on my desktop, uh, in mail and calendar and all those. Uh, that should work. But, you know, I, maybe I should get used to the stuff that, you know, uh, this Hackintosh has to offer as far as mail and, and uh, everything else. Well, I mean, I, I, contacts. I mean I, we use Google Docs all the time to, to work in Excel spreadsheets and, and mm -hmm. uh, Word type docs. Um, if you want to try something, uh, are you familiar with OpenOffice? Uh, OpenOffice, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, NeoOffice is basically a version of OpenOffice that's been uh, customized, tweaked a little bit to make it run better under OS X. Okay. Which is really nice. But, you know, if you're running uh, Google Docs, those will run just fine inside the browser on your system. And and as there's nothing wrong with Safari. Uh, I would just also suggest loading Firefox, unless you're kind of into the whole Safari experience. Um, I, just, yeah. I just find Safari, uh, it's, it's, it's browser. <laughs> it it, it kind of crashes a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and, and it tends to suck up a lot of system resources. Uh, not that Firefox can't, but uh, Safari seems to do it in this awesome kind of frightening way. So I hope with the new version of Safari kind of wraps <laughs> that one down. It's got epic crashes, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with even more crash. The uh, <laughs> no, I'm sure the new version of Safari is going to survive. It's going to survive. It's going to solve a lot of those problems. John, thank you so much for being on the. Uh, on the show and letting us poke around your machine. You have a giant row of tabs of free software to download for OS X. And, uh, Please don't close those. Please. I, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> stepping away from GoToAssist Express. And uh, actually, John, much like Bill, you also won six months of GoToAssist Express for free, which you mentioned earlier you're going to be using with uh, the family down in Corvallis. And uh, we want to thank GoToAssist for sponsoring this segment. And if you want a simple and hassle-free way to tech support friends and family, do us a favor, sign up for GoToExpress for free, a free 30-day trial and log in. Dad or mom need help, just email them the URL and the code straight from the GoToExpress client. They hit yes, they agree, and you'll be in control of their machine in no time. No complicated installs for them and easy remote access for you. It's so simple. And you can try it for free if you go to gotoassist.com slash techzilla you're going to get a month of GoTo Express service free, and you're going to hook up Techzilla and keep us rolling on the air. It's sort of a sponsorship thing. They want lots of people to try this out. If lots of you try it out, then you'll be helping us out. No more late night three hour calls from friends or family that need tech support. Just log in and do it for them. After the break, we're doing some viewer questions, but before we do, let's thank one of our sponsors. If you want to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has what you need. .com names as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. 
GoDaddy.com makes it easy to customize your virtual dedicated server. Choose one of three popular plans or select your own Linux or Windows server with all the plan options you need. Plus, enter code TECH2, that's T-E-K-2, when you check out, and save an additional $5 off any order of $30. Some restrictions apply. See site for details. And check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the TechZilla GoDaddy deals and codes. Get your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and support TechZilla by supporting our sponsors. Our next email comes from Andrew, and he says, Hi, do you know a way to change the audio output in OS X without opening system preferences and clicking stuff? I'd love to have keystroke associated with this, as I do it often. Thanks, Andrew R. Well, this is something that will be helpful to me as well, Andrew, um, since I do a lot of switching back and forth between inputs and outputs for podcasting and music. And I figured it out. What? You're going to do a new OS X keyboard sh shortcut in every show. I did not forever. intend this to happen this uh -huh. way. Was this like the fourth show in a row or something? Yeah, I don't put all the questions in, you know. You do some too. I'm sure, somewhere. You're just Surely in charge you have of picked the some OS of them, right? Why? I, I don't know. It's just, I think it's awesome that you're taking like, the world's most sophisticated visual operating system other than Windows 7 and getting all DOS hacks with it by getting keyboard shortcuts. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, <laughs> if you're really into the key binding idea, there's an excellent tutorial for writing an Apple script, actually, that will do this for you um, in conjunction with using a key binding tool like FastScripts. Cool. I don't know if you're familiar with FastScripts, but it's a really neat little tool. Um, it's free up to your first 10 key binding. After that, it's only like 15 bucks, but then you have unlimited key bindings. So what's the difference between like fast script key binding and old school quick keys? I don't know. Well. I don't know quick keys. Oh my goodness. I think that's the problem. <laughs> Did I just date myself? <laughs> I feel so old. I just dated myself, didn't I? I'm going to get a lot of people mad at me for that, I'm sure. Anyhow, there are a lot of key binding tools for OS X, so take a look around, find which one works best for you. And make sure you check out the comments in that post at macOS10hints.com as well. Um, we have the link in the show notes. Because people have listed ways to streamline the scripts for their needs, as well as listing some command line utilities that do pretty much the same thing. Um, it just depends on what you're most comfortable with, what you're happy futzing with, you know. And if you want to try something other than key bindings and command line utilities, you can always download a menu bar app that will let you switch between the outputs and inputs pretty simply. Um, I use Soundflower Bed, which also enables you to have a few more options for routing audio. I actually use Soundflower Bed to um, make a radio station in Ventrilo when I'm playing WoW, so I can have myself on one account and then the radio station on, on another account. Yeah. But hey, I'm sure you viewers have some more options out there for Andrew, so send them in to Texilla at revision3.com. All right, well, our next question is actually directed towards you, Pat, um, specifically about something you mentioned a few shows back about Windows 7. Uh-oh. Ken writes in, Patrick mentioned a friend who has 12 gigabytes of RAM with Windows 7 beta. He said it was super fast because it was caching the OS and everything. Um, my question is how? Does Windows 7 use more RAM if you have, like, a ton installed? Or are there tweaks? My 4 gigabyte <laughs> system only uses 2 gigabytes, and I have seen 8 gigabyte systems running Vista also only using about 2 gigabytes. I will be building new core i7 system and I don't want to spend more money on extra RAM if I'm not really going to use it. Should I get more than four to six gigabytes? Ken in Pittsburgh. Okay, so Windows 7 and especially if you're moving, so if four gigabytes, great. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're moving to a core i7, six gigabytes is the new four gigabytes because six gigabytes, basically a pair of three two gigabyte sticks is, is kind of where DDR3 is super cheap right now. Um, so. My buddy Grant and my buddy Riyadh started experimenting with uh, Windows 7, and Grant, because he just likes to spend money on hardware, uh, got 12 gigabytes of RAM. And okay. basically, it cached, you know, there's hardware reserve memory. If you look at the, the, the chart up on the screen right now there, the big blue streak there are his regularly used applications. So what it does is actually cache them inside of the physical RAM that is not currently being used by any applications. So anytime he goes to restart an application, if it's been cached in physical RAM, it starts practically instantly. Hmm. It is a good and nice thing. Um, it also basically gives the operating system a little bit of breathing room, or breathing room, as many people say if they actually use consonants when they speak. What um, did you say? Breathing room. Breathing room. Breathing Breathers! Um, sorry, having a firefly moment. I understand. It happens to all of us. But basically, uh, what Windows 7 does is take advantage of RAM that's not being used, uh, physical memory that's not being used, and uses it to cache items that it thinks you might need soon. And don't forget to become a fan of Texilla on Facebook. Just head over to facebook.com slash Texilla to join in the fun. And for all of you watching, we live on your questions. So email us, texilla at revision3.com. 
tech help, product reviews, how to's. You ask us, we'll do it, but we need those emails in order to do so. So don't be shy, send them in to techzilla at revision3.com. Even better, send us a video question. Think of all the fun you can have and the admiration of all your friends and family when they see your shiny happy face on our shiny happy show. Just keep that video to 15 seconds, upload it to YouTube, and send us a link in an email with video question as the subject line. Yeah, that's so I can find them. And hunt them so down. I can use the search tool and, and pick them out, and separate and them from the rest of the, the emails that you Are know. Are you culling the herd? No. <laughs> and as always, you can visit our forums at revision3.com slash forum. Share your thoughts, ideas, or comments with other fans of the show. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. And watch out for compensation. I got stuck in my lip gloss. Lip gloss, why? Looks like it's time for another website we just get still stuck in my lip gloss. Oh, you're getting a hair mustache. <laughs> As opposed to a mustache made of something else. What? Oh, follicle folly. Mother crapper. All right, forget it. It's not gonna work. I have too much lip gloss on. Way to go, Serafina. Messing stuff up as usual, this one. I don't know why we keep her around. It's like week after week, she just, I'm really disappointed in her work. Oh wait, can they hear me? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> They're recording. Uh, in conjunction with using a key, key binding tool, keyboarding, keyboarding. Like, surfing the keys, man, keyboarding. <laughs> Or keyboarding. Much better than do, do, waterboarding. Do, do, do. Take it from the top. <laughs> keyboarding. In three, 